one that is prick in particular. But to be, to be, uh, Mike must know. Oh, no, I don't know he's bad. Yeah, yeah, I mean, yeah. you know, and it's not Tyson <laughs> Fury. It's, it's not Tyson Fury that's saying it. It's not Mike Hennessy that's saying it. But, you know, but these things are going to happen, and it's up to me to be able to deal with them, and I'm dealing with them. The fact is, as I say in my city, because I'm born and brought here. There's no point me saying Tyson Fury city because he wasn't born and brought here. He was born and Manchester. If it was Manchester, say this is his city. Figure of speech. Where is my case? Mick, can, you, can you just clarify the situation with Tyson and David Price and the relinquishing of the belts and so on? Yeah, it's simple. It's, uh, you know, Tyson Fury is, is, is a star. He's been groomed to be a star. He's on terrestrial TV. He goes out in front of millions of people. David Price, the only publicity, in, in my opinion, that he's been getting is off the back of Tyson Fury, being associated with him. Now, I offered him that fight to come on terrestrial TV, to come on Channel 5, to, to you know, if he really believed he could beat him, that's where you, you build stars, that's where you make stars. I offered him a fortune, a lot of money, a career best by a long way. He turned it down, so we're moving on. Do you think it's something that's still on the agenda eventually, though? Or? Who knows? Like Tyson's you know, number seven with the WBC at the moment. David Price is way, way, way behind Tyson Fury. And, and in my opinion, he hasn't fought a live opponent yet. He really hasn't. <coughs> you just see what Matt Skelton, a 45-year-old Matt Skelton, <coughs> Um, done to Tom Dallas the other day. Was, was it this 40 year old does on the 14th of April? Who was fully prepared. <laughs> Tom Dallas was fully prepared, unlike when he fought Price, he went in at four days' notice or something. You see what 45 year old Matt Skelton done. You know, that, he hasn't fought a live opponent, so, you know, as far as Tyson Fury goes, he's not even worth talking about. Martin Rogan has done a job on Matt Skelton in his prime. You know, so. It's prime, mate. It is prime, I'd say. <laughs> so, um, so, you know, we, we, we've got a live fight here, we've got a great fight, and, and this about he's been out for a while and everything else, believe me, you know, fighters throughout their careers pick up a lot of niggles and a lot of injuries. Sometimes it's times like this where it gives them a chance for everything to correct itself. And I've, I've seen him at a couple of, you know, this is, this is probably round three between me and mine, but um, each time I see him, he looks in better shape. You know, so we've not underestimated him in any way, shape or form. We know what he's up to. We know the sort of shape he's in. And as I said, any niggles he's had have probably repaired themselves and he's coming to, to take what Tyson's got. So this is a, a serious fight and believe me, I haven't underestimated it. And you can see the shape this man's in, he hasn't underestimated it either. Martin, with, with so many of our fighters having to, to fight away from home, yes. the likes of Brian McGee, uh, for example, how important is this big fight for Belfast Boxing? This is a fight city, after all. It is. This is the biggest city for boxing, isn't it? You know, and the fans come out in their numbers, as we've seen on few occasions, unfortunately, with, uh, with injuries and stuff that was left me in the LSC arena. But, you know, as I say, getting back to this year, I get a great opportunity again to fight Casey and Fury, and I'm <clears throat> glad it's on. Uh, no matter what shape or form it came in, the fact is it's on and it's great that the kids, you know, a lot of kids out there like Tyson Fury, you know, there's a lot of kids out there have a lot of respect. They've never seen, they don't often see a six foot nine man walking up and down to the city centre. So a lot of kids in that respect, you know, witness a man at six foot nine. Plus, you know, where he is and he's watching him fighting on Channel 5, as McKenzie just said. And it's good for boxing. It's good for our gener the younger generations coming through. That they actually, first of all, I'd like to say the, the way that Tyson Fury conducts himself. Obviously, we're always going to get to the odd bit of mouth and a bit of this, and it's part of the boxing game. But thankfully, we're not we're not going down the road of Derek Chisora or David Ham or going down that road. Of, you know, the fire insults the way that and attack each other. Plenty of time for fighting on the 14th of April. You get in there the boxing contest, you let the kids and the, the mothers and fathers that bring their kids to watch it. You let them see that it's a boxing contest and the winner progresses and the, the, the loser of it tries to pick himself up and carry on with what he's going to do. And that's what, and you see cons at the end of it, and that's what kids need to see. And I think, you know, with all due respect, Tyson Fury's never said anything bad about me. He has said a few things. Obviously, at the heat of the moment, they said a few things. I've said things there too, but that's still the way it goes. You know what? That's, that's the way it is. But hopefully, that just get into the ring and do the damage there. That's where it'll be done. You know? mm -hmm. And hopefully, that'll, do, that'll bring a, a lot more kids from all over Belfast, from every area, in the, in the boxing again, because that's what we're trying to do. Mick, you have no concerns putting a big 
uh, boxing Bell on in Belfast? Is it something you continue to do in the in the future as well? Absolutely. You, it's, it's it's almost impossible to beat the passion that's here for fighting for the, for, for boxers. It's incredible. You know Tyson's last fight. You know the, the crowd there made the fight, made made the noise of about twenty thousand people. The passion that's in Belfast is incredible. And um, I, I'm I'm you know this is. I've promoted at the King's Hall now, and I've promoted at the, uh, the this is the, you know at the Odyssey now. So for me, this is uh, this is something I've always wanted to do. It's great to be back in Belfast. Tyson, mm. you always want to, you always said, hey, hurt what was you couldn't box for Ireland at the Olympics? How special will it be for you to box for the Irish title, the Super National? Well, providing it gets passed, it's going to be um, a good thing for me. Like I said, never got to go to the Olympic Games, and I never got to um, box for Ireland as a well, I did box for Ireland twice before as an amateur, like, but when it came to the big tournaments, they didn't want to send me. So it was sort of a thing that was, it was more of a pride thing, to be honest. And now, yeah, we're going to put it straight. So I'm just looking forward to the fight, you know. And I know Martin's got a lot to say about his destruction and devastation, but what can you say? All to be revealed on the 14th of April, and I hope he's as fights as good as his words, because I've been sitting here not saying much, listening to him ramble on with Mick Hennessy. And um, <clears throat> I just hope he's prepared, because... I've never put myself through this much training ever in my life. This for me is, may as well be, the unified heavyweight championship of the world. This is where it is, it's right here in Belfast. This is the show, nothing else. Klitsch goes, no other fighter in the world matters to me, apart from Martin Rogan on the 14th of April. And I've trained, I put myself to hell and back, yeah? And I've never ever want to go there again. And I've, I've done that, especially, so I can go out there and perform to my best ability, be in fantastic shape and climb myself up to the World Championship and stay there for as long as I want. Would it be fair to say that in your last two fights you weren't in the condition you were when you fought To be honest with you, I've often in the past um, been into fights not in 100% condition and not 100% mentally as well. Last, I don't want to go on and make excuses because, what can you say, I got put down, got put up and knocked him out. But it's one of them things that I uh, had a few problems going on at the time, I'm not going to go into that, but um, now I'm 100% focused on my aim and my ball is to get to the, be the heavyweight champion of the world and I see Martin Rogan as he's in my way, he's holding the key for me, he's, he's stopping my family from eating, so any man who's going to get in a 6.9 man 18 stone, he's been training like a demon in a gym away from the media, away from the celebrity lifestyle, away from everything, locked myself away for that much time. I've not seen my family for 15 weeks by the time the fight comes. Is in trouble. They're not taking nothing away from me because I'm in destruction mode. No man, nothing, no, no army couldn't stop me on the 14th of April. So Martin Rogan hasn't got a chance. And to be honest with you, at 40 or 41, he is getting on a bit, isn't he? So they might call him Big Rogi over here, but to me, he's Wee Rogi, Cuddly Rogi. <laughs> 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 Tyson, how much, how much of part of this fight or which particular fights have you studied? To be honest with you, when I was a kid, yeah, I probably about, I turned pro, what age was I would make? About 20, was I? Just turning 20, yeah. When I was 20, Martin Rogan was on the scene, you know, he was like, he was the man coming up, he won the prize fight to knock them all out, whatever. Then he beat Matt Skelton, which no one expected him to do. I watched all in fights, and I was only had like two, one or two pro fights there. And I'd rush back and watch the fight because I knew it would always be a good fight, you know what I mean? He was one of them fighters that always came. There was no Nancy business, it was get stuck in, <coughs> shit or bust really. And that, that's the type of fighter that I like and to watch when I'm watching it on TV and whatever. And I watched them two fights and I always thought that he, he'd do really well. But like he said, he just never got the um, opportunity. He beat Matt Skelton, he beat the European champion of Matt Skelton at the time. And he also beat Audrey Harrison, who was <coughs> talked about like a top man and he was Olympic gold medalist and whatever. So I believe he should have had a shot at the world title and against Ruslan Shagayev. But he never got the opportunity, he was messed around, fought Sam Sexton, whatever. And it was just one of them things. But like you say, he's got his big chance now to fight a top 10 rated fighter. And um, to be honest, I do think it's the case again of it's one of them things where the young man is going to prevail over the old fella. Really Not that he's that old, <laughs> but in boxing, he's, he's getting on a bit. And it's, it's like uh, really the young warrior always overtakes the old one. You've got to move over and make room. And here I am. Time to shine, baby. 2012, 2013 of my years. Uh, okay. I don't want to spoil your dream. Thank you very much for the comments. Fasten your seatbelts, sit back and relax, because we're heading for the stars, baby. I don't, I don't want to be, be wondering your dreams.
to see to see after the 14th of April when I knock you out. You'll be able to go home a few weeks after that, six weeks, and if you repair yourself and give you plenty of attention, you've been away from the family. I'm not going to understand what it's like because I've done there and I've been nervous for a minute. Um, you'll be able to watch me again on TV now. <laughs> <laughs> well, I've often said it in the past, but I'll state a statement, a statement again. If Martin Rogan beats me, there'll yeah. be no more Tyson Fury. Definitely not. I've said that in the past. No, don't Put pressure on myself. Like no. But well, you know what it is? No. If Tyson Fury can't beat Martin Rogan, he's no chance of winning a world title. Well no disrespect. Yeah. <laughs> I think you've heard it last. Obviously. If, if he beat me, I'd be going nowhere anyway. So, where am I going to go? 23 year old, been beat by a 40 year old man. You can always, always come over here for a weekend with me. <laughs> yeah, <I'm laughs> <out of my laughs> if he beats me, I'll have to go back to his house and shine his shoes for a living. But seeing as, seeing as you're so confident, that's what I love, a confident man. Seeing yeah. as you're so confident, then you made a statement um, in the King's Hall, and you made another statement um, when, when it was up against Derek the Lip to Sora, um, that you would, uh, if he, he said that, that if Derek beat you, that you would offer your, you would give him your purse. Put down on a bit of paper and then if, if, I don't, if I beat you, you'll give me your purse. <laughs> no problem. Well, if you want to, Martin, this, you've started this now. This is my type of language. I will do a winner take all any day of the week. Oh, yeah. If you want to do that, there's the challenge. Winner takes all. And everyone here witnesses it. What are you saying, me? Well, I'm, your <laughs> I, I, I'm the gamest man in the country when it comes Smart to here's gonna have to get out a serious big check. I'm telling you, now it's just to get the book as quick as you can. Because he's all down. <laughs> Mark? Nick, you wanted uh, Tyson to fight for the Irish title before and Tyson wanted to fight for it, but have you actually proved that was the real? Yes, that was the big issue beforehand. Sorry, who's that for? Sorry. For yourself or for Tyson? Have you been on the VOI already? Oh, yeah, yeah, we, 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 we proved that. We proved that. Well, that's hard to go with them. Have we been on the Mel Prison? Yeah, we've been speaking to Mel. So, we do, you know, to, to, to be fair, I, I, I don't like talking about these things until they're rubber stamped and confirmed because that's Mel's business, really. But, um, you know, it, it's it, last, last time we spoke, he was looking good. And it's the, the same for Martin. Um, Right. I don't need to prove. No, 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 no. I don't need to prove. No, no, I know, of course you don't. But Sorry. Are, are you currently registered? Uh, Pardon? Uh, are you currently registered with the the BB, BFC, or Are you with the BOI? Or well, you know, <coughs> living here in the north, you, you know, you have an opportunity to have both. The same as you can have both passports. Um, last year, I got a phone call from uh, McKenzie wanting me to cover. Tyson was fighting Derek Tesora, and he asked me would I come over, and he goes, a few days before, will I take the fight? And I said, certainly would, because obviously there's a lot at stake with McCamacy and Channel 5 and, and stuff like that. And being a boxer, you, you know, you, you take these opportunities and you jump in and you do it, and that's just the way it is, and that's part of sport. And uh, as I said before, I never shied away from the fight, I don't intend to start. But, um, I have my Irish license already, I've already had my Irish license and when I went to go over to the fight Tyson Fury I was told I wasn't allowed to under my Irish license that I had to get a, a British license again and I ended up taking the, the British license out again and then my Irish license is run out in November which is in the process of already getting uh, brought back into play. Um, that's, that, that, the politics of it is totally over my head, I don't know what way it happened. I, I don't know what way it operates because I'm living here in Belfast with an Irish passport, I'm an Irish citizen, so I don't see why, why I can't fight in Belfast with my Irish license or why I have to, to, to go and speak to the British passport and control. To me it's something that really needs looked at and the politicians need to look at it um, very strongly why an Irish license holder needs to pay money to fight in his own city. You know, some of the politics of, of boxing is a lot messed up, I think. But that's the way it is. My Irish license be here. They have said they're going to get their sort of it. So if, if the vendors would mix putting on and that's what it is, then probably it is. Is it important to you if the fight's for the fight or are you just having the fight? Um, um, some fights don't need a belt, do they? Like, you know, some fights don't need a belt. If a belt on that, a pull out that, it'll probably be worth as much to you as it is to me. You know, it's going to hold my jeans up. You know what I mean? Once you get the belt home, yeah, you know, last time I got a Commonwealth belt, I got abused in a newspaper to say that I'd been shoulder up and down the road too much and blah, blah, blah. 
to me, I was never as jelly as to be respectful to win a Commonwealth belt. You know, when anything that you do, and you know, I think anybody in here that boxes um, or any sport at all, that whenever you play, whenever you get a medal or a trophy, that's something that you, that's something you hold very, very close to your chest, and you, you're so proud of the fact that you've won it. You know, so winning the Commonwealth belt to me was absolutely oh, brilliant, fantastic, and it, it actually. I think it put me in the top ten in the world at that stage, so I know what it feels like to be there. Um, and as I said, I never got the breaks, but some fights don't need a belt. Tyson Fury and myself, it's just one of them fights that just doesn't need a belt. Very simply, it doesn't need a belt because you're in Belfast, and, and Belfast loves me, and I love Belfast. So, so you know. Yeah, you know, Martin's right. You know, sometimes titles get you know, get in the way of, 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 of great fights, and, and this is a this is the right time. And it's a great fight, and it's it's not it's never been about the titles, you know. Tyson, Tyson Fury has basically gone gone beyond the titles, and um, you know, believe me, the, the biggest fight out there for for any of the Klitschko's right now is Tyson, because profile-wise, around the world, he's the most talk, talked about heavyweight behind them at the moment. <laughs> You can call me whatever you want when you're on your oh, back looking up at me. <laughs> Mr. No, Sir, you, you Joe, that? Fred, no, I love Dave. That. No, no, no. You'll you be calling me Chuck Nelson and it won't be Fred. <laughs> I, I, you know, I heard, what was the scene that he comes from? Was it was on Twitter as well. From some dude in the says there. You doing stand up? Are yeah. you doing stand up for the sports league? For shall you I give us a bit now, shall I? Go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. Right, can I have a bit of a round of applause, please? Come on. Before we start, I know what you're thinking. I am fucking gorgeous. <laughs> Some modest. people say I'm a Brad Pitt looker, like just a taller, bit better looking version. That's what my mum tells me anyway. Oh, that funny, that's, <laughs> that's all I'm giving you. <laughs> Ready? If he does stand up, then I'm gonna do it. <laughs> Come on in. <laughs> so, <laughs> that's a cracker. Peter Fury, you're a cracker. Put Peter Fury on the lap and do stand up if we do it later. <laughs> Thank you very much, I'll take you back next week. <laughs> <laughs> That's how you get a right one, guys. Well, considering he's done that, oh. I'm going to give us all a nice little song. I was right. You ready for this, everybody? You ready? Is, is there any uh, mic? Can we get any power in these? <laughs> See if you can beat this one. Huh? <laughs> right. He was sitting beside me in the passenger seat As I looked through the windshield light a quiet little street He was smiling so proudly as he gave me the key But inside I knew he was as nervous as me I said, Daddy, oh Daddy, are you sure I know how? Are you sure that I'm ready to drive this car around? He said I'm right here beside you and you're gonna be fine All you gotta do is keep that between the lines <laughs> Sinner Pat, you know there's always going to be a welcome on the map. And if you come from a Dutch corner, or go with there or two, wherever you are, you want to bust at the teeth, that 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 if you don't want to come and see a fight, come and see a singing competition. <laughs> Martin, I think you're going to start yeah, boxing. Yeah. Is this boxing or Britain's got talent? Well, listen, listen, do you know something? It'll put a damper on your sore and hay for their behavior. At least, do you know something? At the end of the day, it's a sport, and we're trying to promote sport. And I think if we've done that, then we're doing it. Oh, <laughs> <laughs>
Is there any more questions from the floor at all? We never quite closed that, we just, just took off on a tangent. By the way, can leave all your money at the door for me coming out? I'd just like to say, uh, before we wrap up, um, you can see that we've got two great heavyweight fighters here, both very confident in producing the knockout, but what, you know, what they're doing for the sport and what they've just done and how they've conducted themselves is great for boxing worldwide, and I'm sure you'd all agree. Deserves a round of applause. I don't think that's 